continue our discussion about culture, and we're going to talk about uh, cultural environment and management style. So, do you think that we can say that one management style is the best one in the world? Can we say that Japanese management style is the best one? So all countries should follow Japanese style. That's better than the American one. What should we say instead? It depends on the style, uh, on the countries and the firms. So we just say they're different. We don't say they're better. We don't say one culture is better than another one. Right? We say it's different. Different companies and different people have success with different types of management styles and different types of culture. So some cultures focus on the importance of competition. We discussed in the last class, right? US culture, they, they're very competitive between each other. They think competition makes them improve. Okay? Then other cultures focus more on relationships on reducing transaction costs means trusting each other transaction cost is like for example we make a contract and we have to pay, make a very long and detailed contract we need to pay a lot of money to the lawyers to make a long and detailed contract but if we don't make a long and detailed contract we just trust each other then we have lower transaction cost so people working in marketing, we should be flexible and adaptable by accepting the differences in thinking, local business tempo, tempo means how quickly we do things, religious practices and political structures. Are you adaptable? The important word is adaptable. Can you adapt? Yes. Hmm? Are you flexible? Hmm? So, if we understand people well in another culture, in another country, we can have a better relationship. So, let's say that I, I'm better, I have a better technology than you. You have a company and you have a very bad technology. My technology is much better. But he thinks that he understands you better than me, and you understand him better. So he doesn't want to do business with me. Right? He wants to do business with you. So sometimes even though you don't have a better product, you don't have a better technology, because you can understand the other person better, they might want to do business with you more than another person. So to adapt, we need more than just tolerating. Tolerating means just, I don't get angry. Okay? So it's more than just not getting angry. Or annoyed. We need affirmative. Affirmative means doing something. Affirmative acceptance. So we have to understand other people's point of view and come up with ideas for meeting the cultural difference. So the key for adaptation is to remain as our own culture while accommodating differences. So it would be a little bit silly if I come to Korea and I try to do all of the Korean customs Right? And you come to, you meet me and you try to do all of the Irish customs. Wouldn't that be silly? You're trying to be Irish and I'm trying to be Korean. Don't you think that would be funny? Right? It's like there's a picture of the Japanese business guy and the American business guy. Usually Japanese people bow and Americans shake hands. But the American was bowing and the Japanese guy was trying to shake hands. So they made a confusion. Right? So we don't have to go we don't have to go to the other culture completely, right? We can remain, we can keep our own culture, but just adapt or accommodate to the differences in the other culture. Okay? So for example, Chinese people don't like to lose face. Do you understand losing face? Mm -hmm. Losing face means that you look bad in front of other people. You look bad in front of other people. Okay, so if I'm talking to the Chinese person, I don't have to show that they're wrong. 
Maybe I think that they're wrong. They made a mistake. But I don't try to show that they're wrong because they will feel bad and embarrassed. Okay? So just I can state the facts, state some facts, state the point or the fact without trying to win the argument. Do you understand? To win the argument and show they're wrong. I can just say the facts, what I, my opinion are the facts. So in that way, I made a plan. I made a plan, I understand the Chinese culture, and I came up with an idea, right? When I'm talking with Chinese people, I'm going to just state the fact. I'm not going to try and win the argument against them, okay? Because if I win the argument against them, then they look bad in front of their co-workers and colleagues, okay? Then they're not going to be very happy. The relationship will be bad. So I make a different kind of strategy. Maybe if I'm with the Irish person, it's okay to win the argument against the Irish person. They don't feel embarrassed in front of the other people. Not much, okay? So I make a different strategy than China. So <coughs> we have different types of levels for things we need to do or don't need to do when we go to another country. They are called imperatives, electives, and exclusives. So you have, we have elective in the university. It's like in the university, you have pensu guamo, imperative, you have to take the subject, right? Elective, what's elective? You don't have to take the subject. How do you say that in Korean? Pilsu Guamok, you have to take the subject, like Jamu Guanli. This is not Pilsu Guamok, what is it? Santek Guamok. So selective means Santek, or choose, right? Exclusive means don't do. Don't do that. Only the people from that country can do that. So the imperative means that we have to do this in order to be accepted in the other culture. Okay? We don't have a choice. If we don't do this, we won't be able to do business. That's the, so that's the most important one we need to check before we go to a country. Okay, so for example, in the Asian countries, and also the Southern European and South American countries, the relationship with the other person is important. Okay, but in Germany or Austria, they don't care much about the relationship with the other person, or Sweden or Norway. Okay, they tend to just trust the person without any relationship, right? They don't know you, but they trust you. Do you understand? Whereas in the other cultures, the people tend to have to get to know the person first. They tend to want to meet them and talk to them and get to know them before they get involved in the business relationship. Okay? But in other countries, like Switzerland, for example, they'll think, we don't, I don't need to get to know you. Let's just make the contract and then I trust you and no problem. Okay? But, uh, so this is a cultural imperative. If I come to Korea, and I'm from Ireland, and I think I can do business without making any relationship with anybody, then I'm not going to do any business in Korea. Do you understand? No Korean person will do business with me if I don't make a relationship with them first. Okay? Or maybe just very low chance of doing business. So this is a cultural imperative that I need to learn if I come to Korea. Do you understand that idea? So imperative means if I don't do that, then no business. Okay? So uh, we have to think about things that we have to do to have successful relationships. Next one is elective. Elective means if we do this, the people in the country will be happier. But we don't have to do it. Okay, so uh, for example, if I wear the Korean traditional dress, maybe you'll feel happy. Or if I use the eat the Korean traditional food with you together, you feel happy, right? Or if I go to the Norebang, maybe you feel happy, right? But it's not that you're not going to do business with me if I don't go to the Norebang, right? Maybe you ask me if I want to go to the Norebang, and I make it very polite that I can't sing and I'm not used to the Norebang. Then are you going to cancel the business? No, you understand, right? You understand that I don't, maybe we don't have the Norebang in Ireland and I'm embarrassed about my voice. And you'll understand that I don't go to the Norebang. So that's just an elective, okay? But if I go to the Norebang and I sing a lot of songs, will you feel happy? 
Huh? We sing songs together, <laughs> dance with the thing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, that's like an elective, right? So all your electives are like greeting with a kiss. So in France they greet each other with a kiss, right? But I don't like kissing the other men, so <laughs> when I go to I'm from Ireland, right? So when I go to France, I don't, I don't do that to the French guys, right? They don't mind because they understand that I'm from Ireland, not France, right? Even though Ireland and France is just one hour flight away, in Europe there are big cultural differences, okay? So I don't, I don't have to kiss them, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, so they'll understand that. So there are some things, if I do that, maybe they feel more comfortable or happy, but maybe I feel more uncomfortable than they feel comfortable. So we can balance out, right? I don't have to do it. Okay, then finally, culturally exclusive. Culturally exclusive is I shouldn't do. If I do that, then the people are going to be insulted, right? So, <clears throat> for example, if I'm Christian and I go into the Muslim church, right? Maybe they think, why well, they're not supposed to go into the Muslim church, right? What are they doing that's insulting me, okay? Then, other one is that I criticize the country's politics. I make fun of the president of Korea, right? About something. Then maybe your friends make fun of the president of Korea. Maybe you'll laugh. Ha ha, that's very funny. Good joke, right? The president did that and that was very funny. But I'm a foreigner and I come along and I make the same joke about the president of Korea. Then maybe you'll say, what? That's my president. <laughs> How dare you make such a joke about the wonderful president of my beautiful country? Okay? Do you understand the difference? So it's okay for people in the country to do it, but it's not okay for foreigners to do it. Okay? So criticizing the country's politics, sometimes making jokes about Korean people, right? So Irish people like to make jokes about themselves or about somebody from Ireland, but they don't like if you make the joke, right? So I can make a joke like, Irish people eat a lot of potatoes, ha ha ha, right? <laughs> or Irish people drink a lot of alcohol, ha ha, very funny, right? Yes. Then you come and you, you're, you're enjoying this. So you decide, yes, yes, I had an Irish friend, he ate potatoes all the time. <laughs> then everybody gets angry with you, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you're from another country, so you're making, now you're making fun of Irish people, what? Right? <laughs> So just, you can allow the Irish people to make fun of each other for eating potatoes, but you don't join in, right? They could get annoyed. What kind of things would you be annoyed if I made fun of Korean people? Eating kimchi? <laughs> Drinking soju? Hmm? Maybe you do that yourself, it's okay, but if I say that, then you're not that happy. Did you get any... Did anybody say anything about Korea? Make any joke about Korea? When you guys were in Australia or another country? I did not just say about Gangnam style. Mm. Did you they like just that? Know That's all they know, right? That's all they know. Did they ask you, are you from North Korea? Yeah. A lot? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know the difference? I always, I always mm. tell like, North is bad, mm. South is good. Yes, some people also ask me, are you living in North Korea or South Korea? <laughs> Could be worse. When I was in the U.S., they used to ask me, "Ireland, is that on the east coast somewhere?" <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was on the east coast of the U.S. In the U.S., they didn't know it was a different country. Mm. They thought it was around near Boston. There's a lot of Irish people in Boston. <laughs> mm. Anyway, we have to adapt to those things if people don't know about our country, right? So <clears throat> then. Uh, let's uh, discuss this question uh, with your partner. So, <coughs> about the cultural elective and cultural. Uh, give an example of a cultural imperative and elective in your country. Uh, somebody in your country. What is the cultural elective and what is cultural imperative?
Cultural <coughs> imperative in Korea. Park Jong Won. Cultural imperative in Korea. Imperative. Uh, you should be. Okay, so you have to be polite to the people in the high positions. Okay, otherwise they may not do business. If you're rude to them. Uh, then, you uh, mean you? Not here. Zhao Jan, not here. Uh, But Patra Khan? Uh, imperative. Yes, imperative on the lecture. Uh, in my country, imperative can be if uh, when you greet an older people, you should shake them, uh, shake your hand. With, you should give two hands. Mm -hmm. you shake them. Okay. Like this. And in lecture, uh, I didn't think about it yet. About the lecture. Okay, then on, honest. Yeah. What about in South Africa? Well, in negative, I'd say if you greet in a native language, a South African native language, that would be a negative imperative. Okay, Wang Wang Chi. Chinese people, we really don't like 
trip, like a trip, like a go Dutch this way to pay go Dutch this way. Uh, yeah. Mm. If you maybe you are from France and you all say, oh, let's go Dutch, the Chinese people they are not like that. And maybe if I start a business, you will be away. Yes. That's still very confusing for me to understand in Korea. Yes, okay. even though I've been here for years, mm -hmm. I still feel very confused if I go for dinner with Korean people mm -hmm. about who should pay and who shouldn't pay. <laughs> and whether, we, whether I should pay just for myself or... Mm -hmm. But in China, if you are going to do business with me, as I were a boss, uh, if you don't pay dinner for me, I will think you are stingy. You are not going to be sincere to do business with me. Mm. Okay. That's what country. All right. <clears throat> so then, uh, let's move on. So we have some impact of American culture on management style. So we can look at this is American uh, culture of management style. Mm, we explained already about the history of the United States, where we have Europe here, and the United States here. Europeans went to the United States, and they settled on the East Coast, right? And then they went across the United States, right? So, they were quite adventurous and risk-taking, okay? And they had to fight for themselves, like, quite independent, okay? So they have this, that they are the master of their own destiny, okay? They can decide what happens. They're running what's happening, right? If you look at Japan, quite different. In Japan, people is all stuck on the island, nowhere to go, right? So they have to make a different kind of system where they have a group system. They tolerate each other, okay? So even the history and the geography can affect it. Independent enterprise is the instrument of social action. So when the first pilgrims came to the United States, they had an experience where they shared all of their food and shared everything. But, unfortunately, when they did that, some people didn't work very hard. So at the end of the year, some people were dying of starvation. So after a while, they changed that you just get to keep the food that you work for. Okay, so then the people started to work a bit harder because they were working for themselves. And if they didn't make enough food, they would starve at the end of the year. Okay? So then they, nobody starved that year. Right? When they started doing everyone has just responsible for their own part. So we can understand Adam Smith who wrote the book The Wealth of Nations, right? About capitalism. A lot of that was based on the first pilgrims who came to the United States. Okay? And the pilgrims had this kind of uh, independent enterprise system. Okay, everybody has to work hard for themselves. Okay, and then at the end, if we have something, we might do some charity. Right? We can solve the problem by charity. If somebody has no arms and they can't work, we can give them some charity. Okay? So we can see anyway this system, capitalist US system, is working more or less okay. Right? We've had a lot of development in the world in the last 140 years. And if we look at countries like Cuba or North Korea, we can find that it's not based on independent enterprise, right? Where people just get the same no matter what they do. In North Korea, it doesn't matter what you do, you get the same salary in the same house, right? So people don't really have an incentive to work hard. Do you understand incentive? So it may be that the country doesn't really develop that well, right? Under that kind of failing of communism, okay? But we can understand that as when it comes into the US management culture, okay? So we already explained before there was a problem between the German company and the US company because one of the reasons was the US managers just had an idea and then they went off and did the idea by themselves without checking with the German and making reports and checking, right? They just went off independently and took the risk try it themselves. Personal selection and reward is based on merit. So you can see in Japan and Korea that seniority is important. How many years have you been working for the company? Okay, how old are you? Then you can get a promotion, get a higher salary. Okay? But in the US, we can see a lot of young entrepreneurs like Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk, right? 
they start their own companies, but it's the same within the company. If you can do a better job than me, you're younger than me, then you get the promotion. It doesn't matter about the age. Okay? Decisions are based on the objective analysis. So we like to make decisions not on subjective, not so much on people's opinions, but we like to have measure, right? Measure things, okay? Wide sharing and decision making. So we have decision making, we have different, two different main systems. One of them is top down, which is used in the military, right? Top down, a lot of layers, a lot of different layers. Okay, then we have another one which is just very, a small amount of layers, okay? So, the US they use this one. Everybody shares in the decision making. If these people are not involved in the decision making, they feel bad and they don't work hard. Do you understand what I mean? I, I, made my, I didn't check with these people about the direction of the company or what we're doing. They don't feel included. Because they don't feel included, they don't want to work on the project, or they don't work well or hard on the project. Okay? So this is a big issue in Korea, I've noticed, among the foreigners who work here. A lot of foreigners work here as teachers, and they get very annoyed because their boss doesn't listen to them, or the owner of the school or doesn't listen to them. So they feel demotivated, and they don't work that well. Okay? So if the Korean manager understood about the Western culture, right? some Korean schools understand they put a Westerner working as the manager instead of a Korean manager. They appoint a Western, pick one of the Westerners to manage the Westerners. Okay? But in other schools, if they understood this, they would understand that if we just keep them happy by involving them in the decision making and listening to their opinions, then they'll be happier and they'll work harder, they'll work better. Okay? So it's kind of, people in the West are used to being asked their opinions and treated like equal. Do you understand what I mean? Like, even though I had some bosses in Ireland, their name was just steering committee. They were just called a steering committee. Even the vocabulary was different. Do you understand steering? Steering? Steering the car. Right? Is that like controlling vocabulary or bossy vocabulary? No, it's not, right? It's not like they're higher than me almost, even though they are, right? The vocabulary is different. They're just steering me. So I'm coming up with the ideas, right? And they're just letting me, giving me some feedback. Yes, you should go more in this direction or you should go more in this direction, okay? So that's the type of thing that I'm used to in Ireland, right? I decide what I'm going to do. I come up with the plans and my boss just steers me in one direction or another direction. So then if I come to Korea, and I have a boss just telling me, you do this, and no questions, and you do that, and no questions, right? And they don't never ask for my opinion, or don't care what I think, then you can imagine that I'm demotivated, right? Because I come from a different culture. Do you understand? So, <coughs> this decision making is important, and uh, just understanding that when we're making decisions, we should... Uh, consider the people, right? So, for example, in an organization I was working in, they want to change something. What do they do? They find a representative of each department, right? And they get all the representatives to meet together. And they discuss. And then the representative goes back to their department. And the representative talks to their workers and asks them, this is the idea, what do you think? And then they tell the representative and the representative gets the idea and they come back and they discuss again. And they don't really force them to do something. Okay? They discuss again and then they make the decision together. And then that means that these people feel involved in the decision. right? They also were involved in making the decision. So now they are going to be more committed. More committed to the decision. right? It's like if you two guys are going to a party later and you want to go to the party, but he doesn't want to go to the party, right? As soon as you get to the party, the party is not going well. He's going to say, I told you this party would be terrible. It is terrible. Look, I was right. I'm leaving. Bye-bye. Right? 
But if the two of you guys make the decision together to go to the party, and then you arrive at the party, the party is not that good, right? You're not going to complain this time, because you were involved in the decision to go to the party. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So you're not going to get, get angry now, right? So if we don't bring these people along, do you understand, bring them along, include them, then they can very quickly turn against us and say, we didn't agree with that idea in the first place. We think it's a bad idea, so we're not going to do that now. Okay? We give up on that idea. Right? They don't cooperate. So that is why sharing decision making. On the other hand, in the top-down decision making, it's more common in Japan and Korea, is more military style. Okay? Centralized decision making. This is be which one is better for making quick decisions? Top down. Top down. That's why it's used in the military, right? If North Korea are attacking South Korea with some nuclear weapons, right? We don't have time to check with everybody. What's the right thing to do? What do you think? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure now. I don't agree with you. What do you think we should do? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> ah, we're all dead. <laughs> right? Well, they have to quickly justify the top to sides. Let's do the missile defense system. Quick. Right? And then say it stops the, blocks the missile. Right? So each one has their advantage. This one has the advantage of making people feel more included. This one has the advantage of making quick decisions. Okay? This one can work well when the person at the top is very smart and a good worker. Right? But if the person at the top is not very smart and a good worker, it may be time to change to another department or change the company, right? Because in the top-down system, you're very dependent on the person at the top ability, okay? And they, uh, they just give the directions, and these people just follow directions, right? And they make the plan, and they follow the directions. And they make the plan, and they follow the directions, okay? One of the weaknesses of this plan is that these people are on the front line. They know what's happening on the front line of the business. So it's always good to get their opinions about the front line. Okay? But then we can make better decisions. But here, maybe they're too far away from the front line. They don't really know what's happening here. So they might not make the best decision. Okay? But a problem with this one is maybe these guys understand the long-term strategy of the company better. Okay? And they, maybe they're smarter. So if we include these people together, we might not make the best decision, right? But here, this person might understand very well the long-term direction of the company, and they might be very smart, so they might be able to make a better decision, okay? So we can't say that top-down decision-making or this decision-making is better, right? Japanese companies are successful with this one, or Korean companies, and Swedish companies are successful with this one, okay? But we should... Just recognize that different people from different cultures are, diff are used to different decision-making system. Okay? So it could be challenging for you if you went and worked in the foreign company because nobody's going to be telling you what to do. You're going to have to find out for yourself what can you do to create value for the company. What projects can you work on? What should you be doing next week? Right? They'll have a meeting and they'll ask you, what's your plan for next week? Right? And you could be sitting there, I thought you were going to tell me the plan for next week. Right? And they'll say, well, okay, then if you want, at the end of the meeting, I'll think of something for you to do. But they won't be very happy, because they were expecting for you to tell them what productive thing you could be working on or what you could be doing in the next week. Okay? So we have to try and adapt, either if we're the boss or if we're working in a different system. In the US, they're always trying to improve. And they think competition produces efficiency. Americans are incredibly competitive. Uh, before, when I worked with Americans, we, sometimes we played two-on-two -two basketball games. Right? So I went down there very casual. Oh, this is fun, just a little bit of exercise, just two-on-two, -two, you know, two-on-two -two basketball game. Just we're going to have a chat and just have a nice afternoon. We get some, a little bit of exercise, right? But start playing the game. Americans start shouting at each other, right? Real serious. They push out of the way to get the ball, <laughs> right? They make a mistake. What are you doing, man? <laughs> like that kind of thing. Why did you miss the shot? <laughs> right? 
right? So I'm a little bit taken aback. I wasn't taking it that seriously. I wasn't that competitive, right? So Americans are quite competitive. They're taught maybe for their culture from a young age to be competitive. So they expect you to be competitive too. Okay, so he said that's a big difference between Korean and <coughs> American culture. So then uh, <coughs> we have the authority and decision makers. So we can group these ones. High power distance countries has more of this decision making, right? Mexico, Malaysia, Japan, the Middle East, Italy and Europe. Low power distance countries, Denmark, Israel, Northern Europe. Okay. So we discussed about this, top level management decisions, decentralized decisions, committee or group decisions. We can see the word here, committee, right? Committee type used in Ireland. A committee is just a group, a group of people. So also there's different objectives across different cultures. D different types of managers want different things. So some people want security. They want job security, right? I want a job that just I want a job which I can't be fired from, or I can keep for a long time. Some people value their personal life. They think the more important thing for me is that I have a good personal life outside of work. Some managers want to be accepted socially by other people. Some people maybe not that many, but in some countries they want to feel powerful and look powerful. So if they get a title, give them a title, they feel very good or happy. So this is also for motivating staff. If you want to motivate staff from different cultures, you know, you can, some cultures, you give them more free time, they can be more motivated and happier, right? Some culture, you give them a better title, call them like executive or something, right? They feel happy because they have some power. They can tell their family, oh, I got this title, okay? Uh, some people like in Korea, the harmony is important, right? They want to be just feel happy and accepted in the company, like part of the group. So we just need to understand about the different things helps us to motivate the staff and the managers. Uh, we have different communication styles. Uh, <laughs> across different cultures, I think we mentioned already about high context and low context cultures. Just a note here about the internet. Many companies these days are changing because beforehand they had most of their content in English, right? 78% of the internet is in English. So I suppose it's useful for you to study English because that's a lot of information, okay? It's in English. But it's only understood by 35% of users, okay? So companies need to uh, make uh, different language options for different countries on their websites, on their global websites. Uh, here, these kind of things also may have different meanings in different countries. So we said red is lucky in China, but red in Turkey means death, so it's bad luck, right? So even the, not just the language, but even the colors on our website or our product can be different. Okay. Uh, humor, humor might not translate well. Uh, you could do an advertisement in Germany for German humor. Show that in the U.S. U.S. people don't think it's funny at all, right? Vice versa, you have an advertisement which is funny in the U.S. Show it in Germany. People don't think it's funny at all, right? Even. The US and the UK, quite similar culturally, but very different taste in humor. US comedy is very obvious and clear about what the funny thing is supposed to be, right? But British comedy is not clear at all. They use a lot of sarcasm and irony. Do you understand sarcasm yeah. Yeah. and irony, right? So they have very different type of humor than the US. <coughs> so uh, we talked about Context is, uh, do we care about the facial expression and the body language, right? Context means we get a lot of message from the body language. Low context means we don't understand the body language. 
Okay, so I'm from very low context culture here. Ireland is going to be here. North America, Scandinavia, and Germany. Okay. Uh, up here, you guys are Korea, very high context culture. So I'm sorry, but I find the Korean dramas very boring because I say to my wife, but they're hardly speaking. Maybe they're there for one minute, just changing their face in front of the camera, right? <laughs> There's some music in the background, right? Camera is showing their face close up. I think it's really boring because I don't understand what's happening. I'm not getting any message or any communication from looking at their face, right? Maybe my wife is crying because the face is so... She got such a big message from the face, just from looking at the face, right? I'm like, what? 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 Is she happy? I don't know. Right? Because when I was a kid, I never learned to read the people's faces or body language, right? Because I'm from a low context culture. So do you understand non-verbal communication without saying words? Important in Korea, non-verbal communication, right? How do people's face look or their attitude is, right? But not important in these countries. So they don't, we don't recognize and we don't try to do much, right? So usually I don't smile that much in the class, right? I, maybe I need to smile more because I'm now in the high context culture, okay? If I don't smile, people might feel uncomfortable. They might think I'm not happy. Okay? So I always have the same thing with my wife. She, I tell her, don't look at my face when we're talking, right? <laughs> Just, she gets annoyed because I made an angry face or something like that. And I say, I didn't make any angry face. I'm not angry, right? Just listen to my word. I said, I just said something like normally, right? But my face must have looked angry. And then she doesn't listen to my words, she listens to my face, right? That's very unusual for me, right? Why would somebody read my face instead of my words? So I tell her, stop looking at my face, right? Just listen to what I'm saying. Right? So if I have some issue about that with my wife. So if you meet a German or Scandinavian person, and they don't look happy, they don't look friendly, doesn't mean that they don't like you, okay? Maybe they, if they say, maybe they look very unfriendly, but they say, I like you, right? Then they like you, right? They just don't know how to show that with their face. They don't know how to communicate with the face, right? Do you think I can take classes in Korea to learn to communicate better with my face? Mm -hmm. Are there any classes in Korea for me? Huh? To take that kind of class? It's hard to learn when you're older. It's easy to learn when you're a child. Right? So just for the Korean culture, just like I tell to my wife, don't look at their face. Right? Don't worry about their face and nonverbal communication. They're not communicating in the nonverbal way. Okay? Then for these people, we need to learn about your facial communication and your body language, okay? And what it is saying to us. So I, I can miss, I wouldn't be very good at body language, right? You could come in here like this, right? And I say, oh, did you have a good day today? I'm <laughs> very happy, right? So I need to improve the, that kind of thing. So just we need to recognize the different culture. So, Americans also have uh, informality and haste, so I'm a little bit similar. So, sometimes the students tell me I'm speaking too quickly in the class, so let me know if I'm speaking too quickly. Haste means doing things quickly, right? Uh, informality, not using the title, right? Just using the first name instead of the title. Uh, not dressing formally, right? Not dressing in suits. You'll notice, especially in the IT, it depends on the industry, but the IT industry in the US, Steve Jobs, even when he does <coughs> product launch presentation, is just wearing jeans and a t-shirt, okay? Or Mark Zuckerberg is just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Sometimes even the tracksuit pants, okay? They don't dress up in suits. Okay? Europeans are not necessarily Americanized, 
we can say some things Europeans, Europe is very different. The south of Europe and the north of Europe is quite different. North of Europe, Scandinavia, Ireland, England is closer to the US. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the south of Europe is higher on Hofstede's power distance index. Okay, this can lead to business misunderstandings. So haste and impatient are the most common mistakes made by Americans in the other countries. So Americans want to go there, do the job, and go leave. Right? But in other countries, they don't want that. They want them to do it slowly, take their time, make a relationship, right? Calm down, right? Let's get to know each other, and so on. <coughs> so this is also divided into monochronic time and polychronic time. So these are ways of dividing these similar things, just dividing into P time and M time. So monochronic time is uh, more the US or Northern Europe. We tend to concentrate on one thing at a time, divide time into small units, and are concerned with being on time. So most low contact cultures operate on this time. So I'm like this, right? I like to do things. I prioritize. This is a higher priority, so I'm going to do this first, and then when I finish this, I'll do this. Okay? Then I need to do this on time, so that I can move on and do the other thing. If I don't do it on time, then I'm delayed. Everything is delayed. Everything gets pushed back. On the other hand, you have polychronic time, which is dominant in the high context culture, like Southern America or Southern Europe. So, these people are able to do many things together at the same time. Instead of dividing up into this and this and this, we can do many things at the same time. Okay? We allow for the relationships to build and context to be absorbed. These days, most cultures offer a mix of this M time and P time. But as the global markets are expand, more people from the P time are adapting to the M time. So uh, then let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <clears throat>